Israel is going to Eurovision 2021 with Set Me Free by Eden Eleni. But will they replicate their 2018 victory or will they stay in the semi final? Let's review Eurovision. So, Israel is entering this year's Eurovision with Set Me Free. They didn't win all that long ago, back in 2018, with the song Toy by Netta. So that sent the last contest to Tel Aviv. So they're the reigning hosts, if you like. Israel has a fairly mixed history in the contest. They've won four times. Weirdly enough, every 20 years they seem to win. In 1978. <laughs> Uh, in 1998 with Dana International and Diva. Viva Maria, Viva Victoria, Aphrodita. That victory in particular was quite important because Dana International attracted a lot of controversy, even in Israel, for being a transgender singer. But she ended up storming the scoreboard in Birmingham. So, you know, big congrats to her. And then back in 2018 with Toy. So the records would probably, I don't know, what am I even saying? Well, I'm confused. So history suggests Israel won't be winning any time soon, but will they take their fifth victory this year with Set Me Free by Eden Eleni? Here's a little snippet. So that was a little bit of Israel's song. Let's go around and hear our thoughts. Emily, are you a fan? I am a fan. I really am. Um, I think it's quite interesting. They kind of, I think this was one of like the first Eurovision songs to kind of come out this year. And then they kind of revamped it a couple of weeks ago to basically, I think, give her kind of more singing or more kind of notes in the chorus rather than kind of a bit of like empty kind of dance track. Um, and I think that's kind of lifted the song quite a bit, but not maybe in the same way that like Ukraine's revamp has really kind of changed, changed the entry at all. But for me, yeah, I am a big fan. Obviously, Eden was meant to represent Israel uh, last year with Fekka Libby, which was also a bop. Fekka Libby. So yeah, I'm kind of, I'm quite a big fan of this one. I think it will do really well. Um, yeah, I'm just a big fan. Not, not much more to say. So nice and positive there from Emily. James, are you as positive? No, I, I love it. I think it's really catchy. I think it's quite Dua Lipa-esque. You know, I got that sort of feeling from it. I don't really know what was going on with the pretzel and the hair. I'm not going to lie. Um, but nevertheless, it's a good Eurovision touch. Um, same with the sort of the baubles for earrings. But I quite like it. We'll go with it. Um, but, you know, it gave me sort of vibes of Fuego and, um, you know, Cyprus and that sort of thing. And I, I really did like it. Not, not much I can say about that, really. Well, I like it. But, I mean, comparing it to Fuego is an insult to Queen Eleni. <laughs> They are not even in the same league. You cannot compare anything to Fuego because Fuego is just, she's, she's the goddess of Eurovision and, and we love her forever. Um, I do enjoy this, actually. I The original version, as Emily mentioned, there was a, a first version that they've revamped. I didn't mind the, the original version. I thought it was, yeah, it was decent. But then when they did the revamp, I actually, I, I do enjoy it a lot more now. I see what they were aiming for and it is a lot more memorable and a lot more interesting. I think she vocally, she's amazing on it. It really is a, a, sh a chance to show all of her range. She sort of, yeah, it, she really, she is the star of the show, absolutely. The risk, though, is that they've added these like Mariah style high notes at the very end, which will be really tough to do live. You have got to nail them. Otherwise, you're going to sound like a drowning cat. And then that is you out of the semi final. That is, you're done. So there, there is a definite risk in having those notes in there. Um, but yeah, it's a vast improvement on the original and even the the music video as well. I don't know who choreographed it or filmed it, but they clearly know 
Eden very, very well because she, again, she is the star of the show in it. Um, she, it, it makes her look amazing the whole time. It really, everything complements her and what she's able to do. Um, it's a really, really, yeah, a va- one of the best revamps I've seen in recent years. So yeah, broadly very positive. Let's go around again then. Israel is performing 12th in the first semi-final. So towards the end of the show, they'll be going immediately after Belgium and just before Romania. But will Set Me Free make it out of the semi and where does it sit in our personal rankings? Emily, your thoughts. So for me, I think, I mean, it'll be no surprise that it sits quite uh, quite highly in my personal rankings. But I think maybe I over-egged it's, it's praise there because I have only ranked it eighth. Um, on my kind of personal rankings. I think Israel has been kind of quite successful in getting into the final over the last couple of, couple of years. So I don't think it will have any issues uh, on that front. I think it'll sail through. I think Eden's vocals are kind of, provided she can hit those uh, Mariah notes, I think, yeah, she'll be, she'll be absolutely fine. But for me personally, yeah, it's my number eight, big fan. So eight is quite high there. James, are you around the same level? Well, to be honest, I think I'm about to take things up a notch. I put it in as number three. I, I really did love it. I thought it was very deserving of place in my top three. Um, I think, you know, all being well, and as Emily said, you know, hitting those notes and things and good staging, I think could get it quite close to, to taking home the uh, famous title, if I do say so myself. Hmm. Can I just ask, would you have been that high with the original version or is three based on the revamp or did you like it that much anyway? I think at first I liked it anyway, but the revamp sort of did, I think almost sort of cemented it for me because I think perhaps I needed that thing to be like, okay, you know, I I really do like it. And that's what happened, I think. Um, And that's why I say as well, I think like most of the songs on Eurovision, it's crucial to see what they do with the staging and the live version because I think that's what was set it apart. Yeah, and I thoroughly agree about the staging. It is so, so important. And I think this is a song that needs, that it, it, good staging is part and parcel of it. I think it's got a lot of potential for really strong, memorable staging. Uh, for me, I actually thought I was quite positive with it, but I am the least positive of all of us. I put it as number 10. So it's in all of our top 10s. That's, that's pretty good going, I think, for, uh, considering the entries we've had so far. Um, so yeah, I think it will. I think it will qualify for the final. I think that's not going to be a huge challenge for it. But I do have a a feeling that because this is a very pop heavy year, in an ordinary year this would have done better. But I think there is just so much pop that will be going to the final that this may just sort of sit in the middle. I think there are better pop songs, there are worse. So I think around the middle of the table is possibly where it's going to end up. I, I don't see qualification as a as a massive issue for this one. So good news for Eden. So a little add in here, forgot to record it in the original one. Israel's score altogether then is 21. When you add our three scores together, that gives Israel 21, which is a pretty darn good score it's one of the lowest we've had so far currently puts them joint first place with the uk so yeah we're clearly a fan of israel's entry so that's everything for this episode thank you very much for watching if you like what you've seen give us a like comment subscribe and if you do subscribe make sure to hit the bell notification to get notified every time we upload new content so thank you very much for watching and see you next time at review revision mm-hmm.